Hey guys, so in this part, I'm gonna show you how to actually use this as a coloring book and update your 3D model. I've got loaded on the screen right now the Gravestone UV uh, layout, and uh, I'm gonna show you how to use that uh, both simply and with a little bit of extra utility. Uh, first, one of the reasons that I made it look like this, um, the UVs don't naturally come as these like color-coded kind of slabs is to make this easy to understand on the 3D model so that you can find everything. But the actual UVs are really just these lines here. And that's just showing where all the faces are on the 3D object and what are the lines you have to stay within. But you'll notice there's quite a lot of gray space or extra bleed room outside of these lines. If you put textures out here, nothing will happen on the 3D model. Um, so you can put anything you want out there. If you want to keep a color palette somewhere, just use one of the small gray areas and put a bunch of dabs of color out there. Uh, or if you want to write some note to yourself, write it out in the gray space. It really doesn't matter. Um, I can see it if I look at the texture file, but if I load up the 3D object, nobody will ever see it on the 3D object. So generally in 3D production, we try to limit the amount of blank space in a UV layout. But I intentionally unwrap these things to be as understandable as possible for a beginner. So they're rather wasteful, but they're very easy to, uh, to read, okay? So this is just the 2D texture, and I've got the folder with all three objects here, and the 3D viewer. And if I take this and I just drop that in, then we can view our 3D object. And remember, left click and drag to rotate it around. You may need to hit one of these. Let's see if I can get a front facing one. Uh, I guess I can't get a front, well, that's, that's good enough. Then I got this upright one, I can move it around, right click to move and middle mouse to scroll. So we can tell the blue one is gonna be the front of this gravestone, uh, green is the left hand side, right is the right hand side, uh, etc. So that when I want to do texturing in Krita here, then it's gonna be easy to find all those places. So first, let me show you this. Um, I am going to, to start off, just make a new layer immediately and do all my painting on this layer instead because we're gonna to need to preserve these lines and be able to tell where all of these shapes are if we hope to accurately paint anything. So I'm gonna get a little paintbrush, let's just get a simple one, and I'll make it some yellow color so we can see it really easily and just scribble, I think I'm actually on the wrong layer, there we go, just scribble on this layer here. And I'm gonna scribble all the way over here and outside the line, right? Uh, I'll even go all the way over to the screen so we can see what will happen. This is just as a test, so you can see what will happen between the 2D program and the, the 3D view, okay? So I'm just gonna file save. Let me see what it does. Um, PNG image, so it asks me for that, but it didn't ask me to overwrite. So it probably worked, but it maybe didn't. To be safe, if you get an overwrite dialog uh, option, then you know you did it right. If I save as, and I choose the same location, so 3D Texture Grave is where this is. Just click on that and it fills in the name and say save. Are you sure you wanna replace it? Yes, okay. Now I'm sure that it replaced that PNG image and now in here we get our little temporary file which you can ignore. But I'm gonna drag all three of these in again and there's my yellow scribble. So here's what I want you to notice. For one, it's right where I expected it to be in the middle of this face and going up this, but there's this kind of stair step here that we couldn't see in the 2D layout because it's just you know outlines, but that's what that is. That's an inner edge. So if you wanted something like moss or shadows or something, then I scribble all the way outside the lines and into the green and they don't line up because they weren't attached. This was separate from that. So they were two different strips. It can be really hard to make things line up perfectly and oftentimes you have to use these lines as guidelines if you want something to line up perfectly. So this would be pretty difficult. Um, what I would recommend if you do have an idea for something that needs to wrap around edges, get a basic shape laid in first, lock those pixels, detail it out, and the very last thing, maybe soften the edges if that's something that you wanna do. So for an example here, if I want this yellow blob to line up, I can see that it needs to be centered basically on this line with one third below, two thirds above approximately. So I'm gonna to try to make that happen by hand. This is a fairly difficult thing to do sometimes. And well, first I've painted right over the top of my UVs. So I could turn this layer down in opacity to be able to see through, 
but there's a different solution which utilizes some of the files I've given you, which is more common. And that's to take the original UV layout, put it on top, set it to screen and lock it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. In my files, uh, we have source files, and that contains the Maya files, which you really don't need, and the UV images. I'm gonna drag the UV image right on top, insert as a new layer into my document. Um, you do have to be careful in Photoshop, it might position it uh, off of this existing grid, but you can see if I turn on my transform tool, then I have the ability to shift this around. You have to make sure that they line up on top of each other perfectly, okay, for this to work properly. Um, and then also you probably wanna turn this layer to screen so that only the white shows through and then lock it. Um, I also tend to turn the opacity down because it's a little bit annoying. It's tough to see what happened until you look at this yellow area. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock the layer entirely. On this yellow area there, now we have those lines showing through, but in actuality they're on top, right? So we've got the lines duplicated underneath just because that's the original you know, layout that we used. But now we can see them no matter what we paint and that's gonna be a big help, okay? So what we needed was about this much space here that I painted over here. I'm just gonna do this the easy way, which is to grab all of this stuff that I've painted, including some of this here. So let's try to get as close to possible. It's a nice straight cut like that, okay? And I'm going to move that, okay, over here. And now you can even see right there, that's like the corner of where I just cut. So about this is gonna line up. It might not be exact, because you can see this kind of starts to go up a little bit at the end here, but that's gonna at least give me a beginning shape that's gonna look pretty much the same. I'm just gonna fill in the yellow a little bit outside the lines here on both of them so that they don't suddenly abruptly cut off. In general, it would be a bad practice to end your texture right where the line is because anti-aliasing might create a um, slight uh, effect there where you'll suddenly see uh, the other color, the one that's behind it, okay? And the other thing that I'm gonna do in addition to this is between my back image, I don't really need this back image anymore. Now that I've got this, it is helpful, but I could add one more layer and then just fill the entire thing with the basic color that I'm gonna use for all of my painting. I can do something like that. Okay. So now if I turn the UVs on and off, this would be my final texture, right? No lines anywhere. This is my utility layer for getting those UVs above so that they act like a coloring book. And then this is the one where if I get confused, I can just see where all of the different pieces are. So I'm going to save as this one, or actually I'm gonna save as this one to see how well it lines up. So I'm gonna go ahead and file, save as, replace the PNG. Okay. As long as I don't close my file, by the way, I still have all of my layers and everything, but you may wanna save a working file for yourself, a, a PSD if you're working in Photoshop or whatever they use in Krita. Let's see what they use in Krita. Uh, .kra. So I'm gonna save this .kra right here in the same folder, but I'm not gonna drag that one, okay? So now, if I go back to the grid, I've got the material object and PNG. Drag them in. Let's see how close I got. Okay, so not perfect, but pretty close. If I just rounded out this shape a little bit on the face side, or erased away a little bit, or maybe added a little bit on the um, side portion, then it would line up perfectly. So let's see how close I can get, just because I'm doing this now. I'm gonna turn my lines back on so I can see what I'm doing. Move over into position. And so to remind myself, it was shave off just a little bit from the face side. Okay, so let's do that first. I'm gonna change my tool to erase, and it was just a little, oh, I'm erasing from that wrong layer, there we go. So just get rid of a little bit there, okay? And then it was add a little bit on this part. Oh, let's, oh, I have the wrong color, there we go. 
So something like that. So now with just those changes, I'll go ahead and save. Um, I'll just leave the lines on this time. You saw it without the lines. That's really what we want. So save as AAPNG. And then we'll reload it and check. Okay, still a little bit more to do. Yeah, I need a little bit more shaved off and a little bit more added, but we're closer each time. And I know that this is like a laborious process, like you're watching me do it, but this is for like perfectionism. And I know that some of you are obsessed with it. So I want to be able to get you guys the results that you want. So just a little bit more shaved off there and a little bit more added. We should be closing in on it. So I'm going to file save as. But really, realistically, you don't need to do this much work uh, making sure that it lines up properly on the object. Most of the time, you're just going to be able to see that you're painting on the right faces and then do all of your painting and just check at the end for any little imperfections. So don't think that this is the normal process or anything. So I'd say that's close enough. Um, you want to keep in mind how close is someone going to get to this object. A gravestone like this is meant to be viewed you know, at a comfortable distance where we've got most of it in view, maybe this close, but not really going to scrutinize every pixel or anything like that. Um, and on other objects such as the gun, you might view it much closer up because if a player was holding it, then it would be large on screen. Or if it was in a shop or something, you were going to buy it. You'd probably have a bigger, a bigger picture of it on screen. But a prop like this would probably be in an environment, and so we're not going to like stick our nose up against it or anything. So now you can see that that stuff lines up properly. So that's one part of this process, just to see if you can get those things crossing over uh, features like that. Another part is what I initially did down here, which is something that you might want to do depending on what it is you're going to texture. So let's say we want to make this cross um, like brass or bronze or something like that, and we want to work quickly. So similar to our other paintings, uh, I'm going to use a clipping mask for this. So I'm going to fill in, let's just use the polygonal tool. I'm basically just going to trace out this shape one more time. It just has to be outside the lines with a, a comfortable margin. doesn't really matter what shape it is. But I'm going to fill it with color so that I can lock those pixels and then paint freely and not worry about accidentally disturbing any other part of this 3D object. So there it's all filled in. I've got a new layer. I'll fill it in with um, some, what did I say I was going to make? Bronze. So we're going to fill it in with like a dark brownish kind of color like this. And then I can lock transparency right there. So that means that now if I grab my paint brushes, let's see how about this one, and I'll take this uh, orange, then anything I paint will never touch the rest of the document. Okay. So if I want to make some sort of like coppery or uh, bronze or something like that, then I could just paint nice and freely. Let's grab something like this. And I don't have to worry so much that I'm going to go into a part of the document that's going to hurt something. Okay, It just makes this whole process a little bit easier. I'll just paint however I want. Maybe it makes it look a little bit shiny. Let's get some dark tones in here. And sometimes you won't be able to tell exactly how this is going to look until you load the 3D model, which is why that's there. Um, but just to take a, a quick look at this unwrap, um, I'll tell you that I know that these center lines here, let me get a smaller tool to point with, these center lines here are the front face. These outlines are the sides of this object. So I know that these spaces are going to be pointing upward right, and sideways. And these ones are going to be pointing sideways and downward. So if I wanted to paint that on here, I would have to add some detail like that. But let's just start with this. And I'll just turn off my UVs, save as the PNG. And I would normally do this, like fill in the space, do a little bit of base painting, and then reload it and make sure that what I expected to happen 
happened before I do any details. So there we are. So you can see it all across this. And then if I turn around, the back of this is also the front. So they're going to mirror each other. But the sides are also textured because they were visible. Okay. So if we wanted to do anything special like wrapping around those sides, we'd have to think about that as we painted. Um, and what I prefer to do usually is that first step, lock the pixels of some selection so that I don't have to worry about going outside. But I'll usually also add a clipping mask group. So in Photoshop, this is just a um, clipping mask, but in uh, this uh, program, Krita, clipping group, which means that it turns on this little letter A and this layer will not be able to go outside of the bounds of this layer down here. So I'm going to turn my UVs back on and just paint some shadows and uh, highlights to demonstrate that we can do that. So I need a smaller brush for sure, just like that. Uh, I'll grab the darkest color, push it a little bit farther, maybe a little bit more red, and then I'll just paint on kind of these bottom sections here. I'm just kind of painting in some shadows like that. And I'll pick a side. Usually I'll pick uh, one of the left or the right side to make darker and the left or the right side to make lighter as well. So that one, I'm just going to do that a little bit. And since this is a new layer, right, I can turn it on and off. I can switch to eraser and clean up what I've done. And again, it doesn't matter if it goes outside or not. Okay? So I'll switch to a lighter, less saturated color paint some highlights like this. And I'm not being particularly careful because I don't really know what it's going to look like yet. And so usually I just want to try something out first and then see what that looks like. So we'll do something like that. Uh, so then I can turn off my UV layer. Remember, if you leave your UV layer on, you're going to see it in your texture. So typically you're going to want to turn that off before you um, export. So I'm taking a look at that without the UVs and it looks, you know, a little bit three dimensional. So maybe I want to mess around with putting some other symbol on the actual surface of the object. So let's just try that really quick. I'm going to make like just kind of a circular shape right in the center here by using my same highlight and shadow colors like this. This is just an experiment to see how I could fake the appearance of new geometry if I want to. So I'll do something like that. And then I'm going to get my eraser and just make it a little bit sharper and also get rid of the transition a little bit like that. So now it should appear that there's like a bolt in the middle of that cross area. So I'll go ahead and save as my PNG. I guess I want to replace it. And then drag it back in one more time. And then check out what I did. So there we go. We've got like this fake three dimensional little bit there. And now what about the edges? Well, they do appear the colors that I made them, but maybe not strongly enough. Or maybe I need to consider that they're very flat polygons and we're not going to really see that all the time. And also there's a little bit of lighting in this three-dimensional setup that I don't think we can change the lighting in this setup. I'm not really sure. Uh, but, you know, this I could use that information to help me uh, polish and fine-tune this approach that I've got. What I may need to do, now that I'm thinking about it, is paint a little bit into the flat area so it looks like there's a bevel there. And that could signal a little bit better that this is three-dimensional. Okay, But you can go on and on with this, and uh, I find it to be really rewarding to do a little bit of painting and then save it out and then look at it on the 3D model. I think it's a lot cooler than just seeing a painting in 2D. Okay. So that's just a little bit of my working process and how I would suggest that you go about it. Uh, make shapes and lock the transparency to get uh, free areas that you can paint without interfering with the rest of it. And then use clipping groups if you want to uh, create additional effects and be able to fine tune them just an easier way to work. Uh, if you don't want to use those things, then it's fine. You can just color right over the top of the base layer that I've provided. 
the only downside there is that you'll lose the lines occasionally. So if anywhere is very, very delicate where you want to know right where the lines are, turn the opacity down, make sure you get the shape right, and then turn the opacity up and do the rest of your painting. Okay. So happy painting, and I hope that your objects turn out really nicely.